Well, how do you pick a stock that's going to make your money work best for you? Well, many wish they had the answer. The traditional ways, though, to seek out cheap stocks measured by earnings per share or to choose a company with good earnings growth prospects. But are there better techniques? And should investors take a different approach to Asian stocks than companies elsewhere? Well, to give us some perspective on that and what's ahead in general for Asian markets this year, we're joined in our Singapore studio by Paul Dietrich, president of financial information services company Meridian Emerging Markets. Um, Paul, can you tell me, are investors changing their strategies when it comes to putting money into Asian markets? Uh, we see a definite change among the large institutional investors in the United States, uh, London, and in Switzerland. Uh, they're moving away from uh, the traditional uh, macroeconomic approach to investing in Asian markets to more of a long-term approach that is picking particular stocks. And what's driving that is uh, many of the stock markets throughout Asia have uh, increased the regulations and the accounting standards. That was one important element. And secondly, are providing more timely and faster data of filings of annual reports to the institutional and international investment community. Was there, were there any particular markets where there were problems in these areas, like transparency? Well, um, it, it, with accounting standards, there's no question that accounting standards have con continuously every year been raising in most Asian markets. There's still a problem in countries like India, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. Uh, with regard to providing data, uh, this has really boomed in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, Malaysia, uh, are very, very good. Shanghai is, is just starting an electronic service that provides all the data in English and in Chinese that's very good. Uh, Singapore uh, and Manila are uh, slightly a little bit behind the times in that it takes them about a month to get out uh, information for filings. And Hong Kong is a little bit behind the times in that they don't provide any uh, information on annual reports uh, uh, other than providing some information about a month later to the local libraries, which doesn't help uh, institutional investors. Well, that's quite surprising because Hong Kong is, uh, you know, one of the, the the first market after Japan where foreign funds come to. Well, they they do come to uh, Hong Kong, but they uh, usually come uh, with a macroeconomic investment uh, strategic approach. Uh, where they're buying the biggest and most liquid stocks and so long as they like the market they stay in when they don't like the market they move out uh, the good thing about this change that seems to be happening all over Asia is that not only are people looking at a, a longer investment horizon but they're investing out of say the the top index stocks and moving into the second tier and uh, mid cap stocks which uh, provides capital uh, and investment in those companies that didn't always get a lot of uh, second look from uh, foreign investors. And it also stabilizes the market because people are less likely to trade in and out of very, very good stocks uh, uh, just because the government, say, does something silly. There must be some pretty interesting companies that they're looking at then if, if they're going down to the mid-cap stocks. Can you name a few? Yes, we, we, we did a, this, this poll which will be coming out, uh, be released later this month on just exactly what institutional investors in the UK, the US and Switzerland were looking for. And they're at a slight disadvantage to uh, local fund managers here in Asia because uh, usually their Asian portfolio is a, a small percentage of their overall portfolio. They don't have the time uh, nor because of the distances to visit the individual companies. So they take a more defensive approach. They're looking for companies that have a strong franchise or niche uh, in the area, whatever area they're in. Uh, primarily this is because if the market goes down at any time, they want to make sure that the profit margins uh, stay up. And so they want companies that can pass on their cost uh, to their consumers, and the consumers don't have any choice but to pay for it. So, so they're looking for strong franchises. They're looking for companies with consistent earnings per share growth. Uh, this is crucial. They don't want companies that have 100% growth this year and then 50% uh, decline the next year. They leave those stocks to the local traders. 
And then the third element they're looking for is return on equity. Uh, this is really important for foreign investors um, because uh, if you have over a 20%, consistent 20% return on equity, it shows that the management cares about the passive investors and not just enriching uh, the, uh, the family or the, the major uh, management investors. Uh, and then they're looking for companies that produce a lot of cash and uh, have a little uh, debt. Um, foreign fund inflows, are they going to increase this year into Asia? Uh, they are going to increase and for a, a, a reason that not a lot of people look at. Uh, in the United States, uh, we have uh, uh, the baby boom generation after World War II is reaching its peak earnings uh, capacity right now. And no one in my age group in the United States believes that we're ever going to see a government or, or private pension. Uh, we don't believe we're going to see any Social Security. So people are pouring money into 501k uh, sort of personal pension programs and that's what's been driving our market in the United States is this money going into mutual funds uh, from uh, private individuals. Uh, Charles Schwab, which is the largest uh, discount broker in the United States and primarily deals with individual investors, not institutional investors, uh, five years ago they had no uh, investors in foreign companies. Today, 8% of all trades are in foreign companies, many of them with American depository receipts, but they expect going from 0 to 8% in five years that it will be closer to 20% uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, by the year 2000. And a lot of that oh, money is going to come think? to Asia. Thanks very much for giving us that interesting stuff. Paul, D Paul Dietrich, Meridian Emerging Markets.